The answer to this question is a very important one because it essentially dictates how we live our lives. Hi, my name is Alexis and welcome to Cum Caritas, where we discover, defend, and live the Catholic faith. As I said in my conversion story, and if you haven't seen it, I'll put it somewhere here. If you haven't seen my conversion story, I explained that I was Mormon and then I was an atheist. I became an atheist. And through that process, in the beginning, when I was Mormon, I believed in God just because. And when you're a believer, sometimes all you need to believe in God is just believe. The proof for the existence of God is found in their lives through experience, through blessings and and answered prayers. And it's very personal a lot of the time. But can we actually prove the existence of God without the Bible, without any religious texts, and just through reason and logic? Yes. We're going to look at three out of the five arguments that St. Thomas Aquinas presented. And all of these arguments, like I said, do not require the Bible or any religious text, just reason and logic. Many skeptics will look at the Big Bang and say that we don't need God to make the existence of the universe possible. However, when looking at the Big Bang, the creation of the universe, we have to distinguish what question the Big Bang actually answers. Big Bang answers not the question of what caused the universe into existence, but it answers the question of how it happened. Let's say that the universe is this image created by a set of dominoes that are falling one on top of the other. Each domino that falls is pushed down because of another domino that was pushed down and so on and so forth. In other words, it is reliant on something else to move it and that something else was reliant on another thing that is moving to move it, etc, etc, and it goes on and on and on. But this infinite line of dominoes can't be infinite for it to actually begin. This is where you get the prime mover, the mover that is independent from all other movements. It is the catalyst, the thing that sets all movement. Because in order for anything to move, something has to start it. Which leads me into my next argument. Picture a chocolate cake sitting in the middle of your kitchen counter, and right next to it, flour, sugar, eggs, milk, cocoa powder. Logic would have you believe that the cake was formed all thanks to the ingredients that you see before you. Logic would also have you believe that the cake didn't make itself. Flour, butter, eggs, milk, sugar, chocolate, all those are ingredients. They are not the cake. The uncaused cause in this situation then would be the baker. A sperm and an egg separately are not a human being. They are the ingredients that are required to create a human being, but they in themselves are not the human being. We need a man and a woman to create. And this man and woman has to have existed before the baby was born, or before the baby was created, actually. There was a point in time when the universe did not exist. Then it did. The universe is the product of all the things it needed to become the universe, energy and matter. But the universe could not have caused itself into existence. The Big Bang in the simplest of explanations, was a small point from which all energy and all matter that exists expanded to make up what the universe is today. The Big Bang is the first domino, and the finger that pushes it is the hand of God. Let's continue with the cake. There was a time when the cake was not, (laughs) and then a time when the cake was, and then a time when the cake wasn't. However, the baker was already there. He already existed. They existed before mixing the ingredients. They existed when the cake was baked and was a cake. And they exist even now after the last crumb has been eaten. God is the same. He is incapable of not existing because something cannot come from nothing. He is the something that has always existed. I think what's difficult to wrap our heads around is the fact that God is in space and time, but he is also out of space and time. He is supernatural. It is necessary for him to exist so that everything else can. After becoming atheist and I reconverted into the Catholic Church, one of the essential things for me to understand was whether or not God exists. And I think for many atheists, it's the same, yes, at least for my from my experience, I was so focused on the things that were rational, that didn't have any f- faith 
is that what I would say? They didn't require any faith. Everything had to be reasonable, logical, but faith is, I mean, that's another, that's another topic that I'll talk about in the future. But because I was so into, because I needed everything to be logical and I had to be able to understand it without feelings as an atheist, it was a very essential part of my reconversion to believing in God. And so I needed to be able to explain to myself the actual truth behind whether or not God exists. And I think for many people that is the that is the first step. And that first step changes everything on how you live your life. Anyway, I hope that everything was clear. If you have a better way of explaining some of these things, let me know in the comments. I'm sure you, you do. And if you don't believe in God, tell me why not. I also put a link in the description with the PDF of all the arguments, books that I think would be helpful for you and that has helped me. Thank you so much for your support. Anyway, thank you guys for joining me and I'll see you next time. God bless.